Hi, everyone. I just wanted to demo for you today three different important types of saves to know about while using PNBot. The first is a file save. The second is the save buttons that you'll see on the data entry sheets in PNBot. And the third is a save that is specific to making changes to barriers and navigation actions um, in the encounters data entry sheet specifically. Okay, so the first type of save, the file save, is one you're probably all familiar with. Um, and that corresponds to the floppy disk icon at the top of your screen, also the keyboard shortcut Control S. And that basically just makes sure that this Excel spreadsheet PNBot file um, gets updated and saved. So definitely make sure to hit that button if you made changes that you want to retain um, before you X out of PNBot. Um, in fact, if you try to X out, you'll probably receive this prompt um, about whether you want to save changes. And if you did make changes, always hit that Save button. Okay? Um, and also, we generally recommend that while you're working in PNBot, just to periodically hit that Save button or hit Control S um, so that in case your computer crashes or if you um, have the document open and get distracted and walk away for a while and somebody X's out of it, that you don't lose whatever information you're working on. So it's important to save the file frequently. Now, the second type of save um, pertains to the various data entry forms that you'll see in PNBOT, including the patient data entry, case data entry, encounters data entry, and testimonials data entry sheets. So what those save buttons do is transfer information um, from the data entry sheets into the corresponding databases, because each data entry sheet has a corresponding database. Um, and when I say database, I'm referring to these sheets over here that have list in the sheet name. So patient list corresponds to patient data entry, um, case list to case data entry, um, encounters to encounters, um, and testimonials to testimonials. Um, you can also navigate to the databases by clicking on these buttons here that you'll see in the data entry forms that say see full list of patients or cases or encounters or what have you. So just to give you a concrete example, um, right now I'm in the patient data entry sheet. If I click on create a new patient record, I bring up all my form fields over here, and I see here there is a button that says save and continue to case data entry. Um, on the other hand, you know, if I had selected instead look up or update an existing patient record, I also have a save button here for save update. So um, currently, if I just go to the database, I see that there are two records entered here. So I have two patient, patients entered in the patient list in this database. So I'm going to go back to patient data entry, and I'm going to create a new record. And I'm not going to fill it out as thoroughly as I normally would. Um, but just to give you a quick example, I filled out a few fields here. Um, before leaving the sheet, before Xing out, or doing anything else, if I entered information here that I want to save, I definitely want to hit this Save button. It's not enough to just save the file, because that would just make sure that this information here gets saved in this data entry sheet. But it doesn't ensure that it makes it into the database. So the next time somebody um, tries to look up another patient record or clears out this form, this information would get lost if it didn't make it into the database. So clicking the Save button will make sure that it makes it into the database. So I'm always going to receive some kind of confirmation that the save was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, and similarly, for the case data entry sheet, um, I'm not going to go through and fill out all the fields here, but I also have a Save button that I really need to hit to make sure that um, the database gets updated. So how do I know if my data from the data entry sheets made it into the databases? I can always click on the buttons that go to the full list or the databases. And I'm going to click on that for case lists. And I see here that 
the entry that I just created for Serena Phillips made it in here successfully, so I know that save was successful. Um, and similarly, for the patient data entry sheet, I can click on see full list of patients, and before we only had two entries, I see here the third one that I just created, so I know that that save was successful. So you'll see those save buttons um, definitely in all of the data entry sheets throughout PNBOT, and you know, you may navigate across sheets, but it's always really important to not forget anything that you entered in a data entry sheet that you want to save. And it's always a good idea to just hit that save button before navigating away if you think you'll forget to do so later. Um, I just want to show you real quick in the encounters data entry sheet. Um, I'm going to click on add a new encounter here to bring up my form. I won't go through everything that, you know, you would normally fill out, but again, you see the Save button here. So if I click Save, I again receive my prompt that the encounter was saved. I can again go to the Encounters database by clicking on See Full List of Encounters and my entry for August 3rd, which is today, um, has been added to the list of encounters or the database of encounters. Okay, so that's the second type of save um, that's really important to know about. Always click that Save button when um, working in a data entry sheet, whether you're saving a new record or updates. Um, so the third type of save that I want to go over with you today is specific to the Encounters data entry sheet. Um, so I'm going to pull up a new record here. And the third type of save has to do with this barriers and services information table at the bottom of the form here. Um, so this table, we have a separate tutorial video explaining in greater detail how it works and what everything means, but this is basically meant to track specific barriers throughout the course of navigation. So if I were to create um, a new barrier, by clicking on, let's say, care coordination and noting that this patient has, um, I don't know, maybe an end-of-life care need, um, I can click OK, and that new barrier gets added here. I just want to draw your attention to the second column here where it says save updates for this barrier, and it's highlighted in yellow, and that's because it's really important because what this value is here, whether it says yes or no, will determine whether the information in this row gets saved to the database. Um, so any new barrier that you add will default to yes over here, um, and that's because we assume that if you're adding a new barrier, you want to save that information. So um, I can add some actions. I can add a current status. Um, I can write myself some notes. And then, of course, I still want to go to the top over here, and of course I would have entered some other information for the encounter, and always hit Save. So that encounter was saved. Um, and I just want to show you what happens if I add a new encounter for the same patient. Maybe it's... Um, let's say it's a week from today. So that first encounter was for August 3rd. Maybe today it's actually August 10th now. Um, when I go down and look at the barriers and services information table again, I see the previously entered barrier. Um, and now, instead of yes, the second column defaults to no. And that's because we aren't assuming that just because a patient had a barrier that you had documented previously, that you have an update that you want to save about that barrier. So, you know, again, if I had added a new other barrier today that I just identified during this encounter, it would default to yes. But this old barrier that was previously encountered defaults to no. So if I were to save this encounter, this new barrier that I just added right now, home health concerns, would get saved, but nothing in this end of life care needs row would get saved, because um, this is really just a prompt or reminder for you. However, if you do have an update to save about your old barrier, um, end of life care needs, like for example, if I did something new for my patient today to address the end of life care need, like maybe I 
um, provide a referral to a hospice professional, and maybe the current status changed um, from being a short-term um, solution to something longer term, or if I have additional notes that I want to add to here, um, I want to save those changes and note that these things happen during today's encounter on the 10th. So it's always important then to change this no to a yes if I made any changes to this row over here before going back and saving the encounter. Okay, so the changes to the barriers and actions you'll see in the barriers list database. So those changes were reflected here. Um, so my first entry documenting the date of encounter for August 3rd and the first time I identified end of life care needs shows up here in this row. And I can also confirm here in the barriers history list that um, for the entry that I just made for August 10th, I see here um, an entry for the new barrier that I just um, added for home health concerns, but I also see that end-of-life care needs has been um, updated, and the new action that I took has been added um, for August 10th, and the barrier status has been changed from what it was before. And that's how I know that those saves were successful. So that second column in um, the encounters data entry table um, where you have the option to switch between no and yes is really important to also um, remember to update if you want to make a change to a specific barrier. Okay, um, so that's basically it. Um, it's important to know about file saves, save buttons, and barriers and action saving for encounters data entry. Um, we do recognize how much work it is to enter data. We want to make sure that you don't lose your data and can save everything that you've spent so much time entering. Um, so we hope that helps. Um, thank you for watching.